All right. Magandang araw mga kapuso. Kasama po natin today uh, the incoming National Security Advisor, uh, long-time academic and professor, formerly professor at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Uh, and of course, disclosure, my former professor, I think two subjects alone. I hope I was a good student uh, as much as possible. Kasama po natin today is incoming National Security Advisor, uh, Dr. Professor Clarita Carlos. Thank you very much, ma'am, for joining us. Well, to correct you, you were not just uh, you know a student. You were my star student. As a matter of fact, in those two courses, you got the highest grade, which is one, and you really deserved it. It is, uh, you know, we have to correct the notion that uh, you know that you were not a star student. You were a star student, and I think you know that I I fought fiercely for you to be a member of my department. Thank you very much, ma'am, for, for that disclosure and background. And of course, uh, let me say also that uh, a lot of us, including myself, of course, we we're very grateful for your uh, support and mentoring throughout the years, even after we uh, we graduated uh, from our program. So we very much appreciate it. And thankfully, now we have the opportunity to talk to you also on your incoming, very important uh, duty as the incoming National Security Advisor. Ma'am Carlos, of course, uh, marami sa ating kabataan, no? especially ang audience natin dito sa program namin sa GMA Network. Uh, medyo siguro familiar sila sa trabaho ng Department of National Defense or DFA. Uh, but I'm sure National Security Advisor is a very, very important position. Can you give us a little bit of a background, ma'am, on that? And before that, uh, of course, you're quite a known figure in Philippine politics. Um, but I want to, I, of course, in Philippine political discourse, but could you also remind our audience, ano po yung naging background nyo in terms of your contribution to the Philippine bureaucracy and the DFA? in the DND, among others, as your capacity as a strategic affairs expert throughout the decades? Yeah, um, Siguro, we start with uh, my teaching uh, when I was 20 in 1967. And uh, at the time, the Department of Political Science was so small. So all of us had to teach practically all the courses in the department. So you can imagine, Richard, we had five areas there. So we namin lahat yung lima na yon. So, um, all the courses listed there, which are part of our course uh, and uh, cognitive courses, na ituro ko na, no? But I particularly uh, zeroed in on international politics and foreign policy over time when we had more and more faculty that will teach the other courses. So I had less on public, uh, you know, and local government. These are not my areas of expertise. So siguro through the years, that is how it was. We just continue teaching on foreign policy and international politics. And you hone your skills and your scholarship and you wrote papers along those particular lines. And then I got involved in consultancy work with public and private sector. Particularly, the public sector would be with the Senate and the House of Representatives, where for most parts, I really uh, did consultants work on foreign policy. So it would be with Senator uh, Orly Mercado for 12 years, and then uh, Loren de Garda, and then uh, Senator uh, Miriam Defensor, and Senator Leticia Shahani. And notice mo, Richard, lahat yan, chairman ng Committee on Foreign Relations. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, so consistently, yaan ang sinusuportahan kong mga senators. And they are, for most parts, about foreign policy. Uh, now, the role of... Also, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you also played a... I think crucial role in the Foreign Service Institute uh, and the National Defense College of the Philippines, if I'm not mistaken. Could you uh, also clarify in that? Because those are very important institutions in terms of yeah. elevating strategic affairs analysis in a, within our government or attached agencies to the government. Yeah. Okay. During the time of President Marcos's uh, second term, this right. would be like early 70s and even before martial law, he created what is called a career uh, executive uh, service. And part of that is the Career Foreign Service Development Program. This is just for FSO's diplomats in uh, the DFA. And I was one of the four trainers. This would be 73. I cannot remember now, Richard, uh, uh, the dates, no? Right. And um, I was very young then. In fact, I was so diffident about, you know, facing ambassadors. And here I was and you know, telling them about regional integration, etc., like that. But we did very well. Eventually, it span away, and this is now Richard the Foreign Service Institute. That was your career for foreign service development program, now institutionalized now as Foreign Service Institute. When I was working with Senator Shahani, so uh, I was part of the crafting of the, the creation of the FSI. 
And then in 1998, when Orly Mercado was Secretary of Foreign Affairs uh, of the uh, uh, Department of uh, National Defense, minitpit niya ako as National uh, Defense uh, College President. It took a while for me to agree, Richard, kasi parang August na ako pumasok doon. Dahil ayaw ko talaga. Because I have not had any administrative work. Sabi ko, ayaw ko, ayaw ko. I just want to stay in the university. Ang minimang kailangan kita doon, ayusin mo yung kolehyo. Because that is the one that will really uh, provide a strategic uh, perspective of those who are going to get their star and their strides. And I had the tenure there for six years, but for reasons which we will not divulge anymore, no? um, I stayed only for three and a half years. So I went back to the university where wala akong boss. So um, now fast forward, no? uh, National Security Advisor, actually I didn't know Bongbong Marcos. So contrary to claims of many that I am their pet analyst, no? <laughs> Ang ganda nga anong term. Let clarify on that, ma'am. Uh, that's <laughs> precisely why I had to emphasize the FSI and National Defense College background. Because uh, we haven't had many um, civilian uh, national security advisors. A lot of them came from military backgrounds. So siguro sabi ko, importante na malaman ng tao, you have a very extensive background. Uh, when it comes to the national security affairs, including working within the government, although you went back to uh, to to the academy, of course, after that. Can you also, yeah, yeah that's why I had to emphasize that, ma'am, but please go ahead and clarify on that point. Yeah. You know, Richard, in 1998, mm -hmm. um, is uh, because they were doing all the demolition job against me that, you know, yeah. I don't know nothing about foreign policy, security, and yeah. But of course, I proved them wrong. I will also prove them wrong. This is a national security advisor uh, hmm. role. What is the role of the national security advisor? Siyempre nag-research din ako, Richard. Ano nga ba itong ano? Sabi, <laughs> pinapasokan ko na NSA, right. no? Um, right. Actually, ang, ang, ang principal mo lang dyan is the President of the Republic. So, uh, kaakibat mo dyan yung NICA doing your intel work. Pero dun sa within the NSC, the, the National Security Council, Ang chair mo dyan is President of the Republic. Ako yung susunod sa kanya bilang NSA. Now, this is the same setup yung the much maligned NTF LCAC, no? Uh, na chair din sa President, ako yung susunod sa kanya. Palaging ganun eh, sa Counter-Terrorism Council, sa, no, ano pa ba? Ang dami nga pala, hindi ko nga, na, 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 nag-discovery ko lang ito, Richard, kasi kaka, kakabrief ko palang kahapon, nung sabi ko, sus, Mario Sef, ang dami pala nitong dinadapaan, no? But um, yes, the work of the National Security Council is much, much more important than that of the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Because the Secretary of Foreign Affairs has no business shooting off his mouth and doing foreign policy. Ano lang siya, implementer siya eh. Because I know, Richard, you know, that the Chief Architect of Foreign Policy is the President of the Republic. Thank you very much uh, for that, ma'am. I mean, uh, uh, thank you also for clarifying that medyo talagang... Uh, it's important that we understand that the work of the National Security Advisor, of course, internationally, Henry Kissinger, Zbigniew Brzezinski, I mean, these are the star National Security Advisors that we have had, and they played a very important role in shaping the foreign policy of key administrations in the U.S., whether it was intervention in Afghanistan, intervention in Indochina. Uh, so, of course, we look forward also to you playing an important role. I, I understand that uh, the incoming DND, Secretary, uh, uh, you know, uh, General Faustino is also a former student of yours, so perhaps you will be a much more dominant <laughs> national security advisor than, than the other ones, considering among your students are all over the place, all of these people you have trained, and lives of which were touched by your teaching throughout the years, ma'am. Yeah, in fact, Richard, after the briefing with the president, where I was uh, also asked to be present, Sabi ni ano, Boy Faustino, sabi niya, ma'am, let's work ano, together. Sabi ko, sabi, hindi ko nga siya naalala na, remember Richard, you've been teaching for 56 years, hindi mo talaga maaalala. No? Uh, of course, start student kita, kaya maaalala kita. No? So, uh, taka recently lang kita naging estudyante. So, I like the fact that they're open to uh, working with me. I'm a civilian. I bring in the perspective of a social scientist. I think that is our contribution to our uh, national security conversation, you know, uh, Richard, including you for that matter, as a social scientist. And yeah. even Rick De Leon, I knew him way back, no? Ano uh, nasa NDCP pa kami, 22 years ago. So maganda na meron ng cordiality um, in the beginning, ab initio. Mom Carlos, this is a national security advisor role. I mean, one of the important things that uh, 
folks do in that position is they overseeing national security strategy yung NSS no uh, napakamahalaga yan kasi diyan natin makikita ano yung prioridad ng isang administration at ano yung mga long term objectives na meron tayo sa ating national strategic outlook uh, we have had one in recent years maraming salamat sa outgoing administration i think after quite some time uh, do you for, uh, do you foresee also coming up with that or are you dedicated to come up with a new national security strategy so that people know more about san tayo papunta pagdating sa ating strategic priorities in the years and decades to come for that matter? Yeah, um, maybe because you had already mentioned it because of the very strong influence of the United States model, we tend to think of national uh, security as something beyond our shores, you know, involving uh, contested South China Sea, the Quad, the Opus, etc., like that, the contest of two superpowers, uh, you know, uh, to carve uh, spheres of influence here but um, when you put in our social science perspective, you discover that national security is the security of your person as an individual. And therefore you talk about, I'm sure even the previous national security advisors have noted that, except that because of our perspective as political scientists, we really zero in on the fact that it's all Richard Paglabas mo, there is a, you know, an assurance na makaka ka ng bahay na buhay. Okay, that is your personal security. Na meron kang salapi na pambili mo ng tumataas na uh, gasolina. No? Na meron kang job. Na hindi bukas, wala kang job dahil meron kang security of tenure. All these things are human security issues. That is, I think, um, it's not a different, but we enhance a certain part of security, which maybe many people um, are not aware of. I think yun siguro yung value added natin, Richard, as social scientists. I really appreciate that, ma'am. It looks like, for instance, you have, uh, uh, I mean, the outgoing uh, Department of Agriculture Secretary, you have hired him, for instance, to advise you on uh, food security issues. So it looks like parang kumukuha po kayo ng mga top experts, including outgoing top officials, to help you. Dahil napaka uh, interdependent kasi yung security. I mean, you cannot address, uh, let's say, insurgency issues without addressing food security issues and so on and so forth. So I, I assume you are going to have that kind of multi dimensional comprehensive approach to national security and perhaps that's going to be your unique contribution as a social scientist in charge of that position yes uh, as a matter of fact uh, we were just brief yesterday but i would like to see uh, maybe some uh re or changes so that um the, the bulk of our work would really be researched and you know what research looks like uh, uh, richard you are a top researcher you write very well and uh, Anything and everything will have to be database. If we don't know, we will also include that in the report that we don't know or we also say there are colliding claims and you bring into the conversation. And so, like right now, because we will, I'm sure we will have other catastrophes like other pandemics. So I want to form a biosecurity group. Uh, you know, to take care of the health concerns. As you said, you really, this will really straddle so many other issue areas, no? Uh, so health, education, etc. My only concern is I, I want to be sensitive to the jurisdictional issue. And I think you know that, uh, Richard. I, uh, I just want to inform the other departments like transportation. Yes, there are many serious uh, security issues there because they're weaponizing the trains and the buses. And they're bombing them. Isn't that a security issue? So I just need maybe to raise the level of consciousness of these departments, which because they are so engrossed in what they're doing, might forget the security component of their work. Right. So that kind of overarching understanding of what national security means. Now, speaking of this, let's go a little bit to the uh, some of the key issues uh, that you have discussed in your uh, interviews recently, and I, I, I want to follow up on that. No, una, una, of course, a major controversial issue ng red tagging or accusations of red tagging against some of the administrations, outgoing administration. You have said that you're strictly against this and you want to have a different approach. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Where do you want to make this different in terms of your approach, in terms of dealing with legitimate security threats, but at the same time, avoiding this spilling over into some sort of paranoid response uh, that could uh, undermine civil liberties and political rights? Yeah. You remember our research course, Richard, 299. And we said there, when you use labels, that means you have run out of cogent arguments. Talo ka na. So, nagli-label ka na lang ng tao. But when you label people, are you explaining them? No. 
Is that the way of IDing them? As I said, it's a lazy way of IDing them. Ikaw ang Richard, ah, komunista ka, pasista ka. You know? So like in all our master's thesis and even a, a, just a regular graduate paper that you're writing, di ba meron kang part on which says definition of terms. So huwag tayo mag-label ng tao. And parang conclusion mo na yun, eh, paano naman yung tao? Paano niya i-defend ang sarili niya? Akala ko ba may presumption of innocence tayo? That's the why, you know, pati si Tony Lavinia, I, 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 I don't know if you don't know Tony, din siya ng asog sa Ateneo. He labels yes, siya na parang, Oh, oh, na member daw siya ng Communist Party of the Philippines na hindi naman siya member, you know? Bakit gano'n napaka-reckless and careless natin about labeling people? So I said, stop this already. It is not productive. Anything not productive, let us stop doing it. What we need to do is, uh, yung pa, pati taken out of context pa yan, Richard, yung stop the negotiation. I said, ano pa ba yung mapag-uusapan natin na parang mm, yes. hindi ka pa nga pinapanganap, Richard, eh, nag-negotiate na tayo. Di ba? So, Uh, tapusin na natin yan. We know already our commonalities. Let us hold each other's hands. Implement natin on the ground yung mga success na ng local peace councils. Hindi ba? These are the things that we need to do right now. Yung mga immediately doable. Eh. Oh, so, ma'am, are you looking towards some sort of a reboot uh, dito sa peace process and peace negotiations? Because yun nga, I think perhaps taken out of context in comments in general, like the peace process is supposedly has perished or something like that. Are you looking at a new modality, new approach, new ways of engaging it, or are, is that something under study, scrutiny right now? Yeah, remember in our 299, I said, um, don't think in boxes because boxes put you in, uh, you know, in, in limited space and it doesn't allow you, it doesn't give you wiggle room. Because you're boxed in A, you cannot be in B nor C. Let us look at a continuum as our explanatory platform. And therefore we say, okay, once upon a time we were really, you know, all our views are colliding, but we started talking and we identified commonalities. And usually those commonalities are on low politics areas. I think, you know, the concept of low politics, uh, these are less controversial areas and move from there. And it spills over into higher and higher level of sensitive areas, but we would have planted the goodwill, you know, the confidence, the trust confidence in the local measures. politics area. Yeah, yes. confidence building measures, CBN. Yes, confidence building measures. And therefore, that is what I want. And I said, Richard, total, we don't have quarrel already about, you know, the injustices, the lack of opportunities to dream, et cetera, like that. Mag, mag, kama, mag, ano, mag kapit bisig na lang tayo, i-implement na lang natin sa ground. We continue talking, but not in a formal negotiation, magkaharap tayo. We continue talking, oh, ano ba yung, what, what works, what doesn't work? Hindi ba maganda yun? Let us change the platform from boxes to a continuum. Right. Uh, well, of course, I mean, you come, uh, you have, served many years in the University of the Philippines as a faculty. A lot of people involved perhaps in, uh, in the movement, uh, in insurgency movement, often may have ties with UP among others. Uh, it, do you think that gives you a much more nuanced understanding of the root causes of these insurgencies, the personalities involved here, how we should deal with them? Yes, definitely. Uh, I'm sure, Richard, you have heard remarks that, oh, bakit yung estudyante mo ay namundok at naghawak ng baril? Aba, malay ko, yayam niya ba ako? No, hindi naman yun ang work ko uh, bilang guru sa university. I'm sure you know, Richard, because you're a professor yourself, you present them with an array of ano, parang buffet yan eh. E bakit pinili niyang umakit sa bundok? Ang magagawa ko? Eh, si Jesus Kudera naman, pinili naman maging senator. E okay lang, di ba? It's, it's not our choice. I mean, you come to the university, you're 18, 19, just you pay the consequences of your choices, whether it's positive or negative. So wag ko kayong maghuhusga-husga niya. Na, si Carlos, wala siyang pakilam kung ano nangyari sa estudyante niya. Wala akong pakilam ho kasi 56 years na ho ako nagtuturo. Ilang thousand na ho kaya yung ano, tinuro ko. Palagay niyo ba, mag-iwi pa ako ng mga bata na yan? Hindi ah. The moment they leave the university, Richard goes here, another one goes there. And you, you are shown that you have planted enough liberal education uh, Uh, ethos in those students for them to make a decision. Tama ba, Richard? Uh, although, ma'am, just to say, I mean, in your defense, I mean, one of the things I heard about you, and perhaps one of the things I like in our class was you were very open to contrarian views. I'm a very contrarian student. I mean, you know that first off the bat, that turned off a lot of professors. We're not going to name names. But you were one of the few who not me, not me. appreciated <laughs> it. Yeah, and, and that I think that's the reason why we had an excellent interaction 
at, at least back in the day. Uh, and and I also remember there was a story na parang there was a frat uh, war or something like that and then na protectan niyo po yung isang estudyante. So just to say, uh, within UP community, I mean, that was the reputation you had among us students. Ito palaban ito na uh, na teacher, na guro, na protectan niyo talaga yung mga estudyante. Kaya nga, I asked about this question because you seem to have that kind of compassion and sympathy for students that many people are looking for their professors. And now in your incoming position, perhaps that could give you some nuanced outlook, a different outlook, a much more helpful approach to this issue. Because Richard, I have been a student myself. Okay. And I know what stupid professors look like, you know, who read from the notes, who are seated for three hours and I'm sleeping there and I'm wearing shades because I'm sleeping also. I don't like to do that. So uh, you'll notice, Richard, pag nagturo ako, umiikot ako, naglalakad ako, di ba? Surat-surat sa pisara. Because that's the kind of thing that I want. And I like it that you challenge me. I like students who challenge me and uh, who in fact present, uh, I am not, uh, what? I'm a scholar. We're all open to changing our minds. Otherwise, let's change our name to bigots. <laughs> We're not like that. We're scholars, no? So I like students who challenge me. You know, professors who don't like to be challenged, there's a name for them. Kaya lang, baka mabahan tayo sa airwave. Kaya na, wag na natin sabihin yung gano'n. Yes, no, thank you very much for that. I was a little bit like scratching my head. Yeah, we can have that in private conversation. Uh, thank you for that, ma'am. Now, um, going to the issue, of, again, I know that, you, you, of course, there are jurisdiction as issues and all. I'm sure DFA and DND will have their stance on this. But speaking about the issue of West Philippine Sea, our relations with the great powers, you have made many statements that stick, uh, stick out, at least for the people. I'm not surprised at all. I'm quite familiar with your, let's just call it unorthodox, outside-the-box thinking on geopolitics. And that was something that yeah. I always appreciated. Um, first of all, in China, you mentioned, uh, Secretary, that uh, Professor, that um, you want critical engagement with China. Can you explain to us what does it mean? Does it mean a much more calibrated approach, combining engagement and proper level of minimum deterrence to ensure we protect our interests and get the most out of our relationship with China? Can you expound on that? Because that's a very important, I think, uh, point that you have made in recent weeks. Yeah, critical and uh, constructive. And you can chase the direct object, uh, Richard. It can be right. US, Russia, you know, China. Except that we seem to be parang flavor of the month natin in China because, you know, the things that are happening. But yes, critical means, uh, Richard, that you are looking at all the factors and forces that go into this relation. You know, which one works for us? Is it economics? Is it cultural? Is it political? Is it jurisdictional? Is it territorial? And we're saying in regard to China, we were all be dead and we still could not uh, resolve the territorial and uh, jurisdiction issue. So let's shift gear. Let us go to law politics area. And right now, uh, together with one researcher of mine, we're writing a book on regional fishing agreement. And guess what, Richard? I shared this with the ambassador here, Ambassador Silian. And he said, oh, you're writing that? Can we also join you in writing? I said, of course, join us in writing. Do you see the point of this, Richard? If the Chinese scholars and we are writing a regional fishing agreement, and we will involve later on scholars of all countries washed by the contested South and East China Sea, you're, uh, you know, you're bringing in a uh, confidence building measure, trust, cordiality, friendship, because we are writing together, we're conceptualizing together. We are, in fact, agreeing on what methods of research we're going to use. Isn't that a very, very good demonstration of a low politics area? You try that first. I, I'm sure you know that uh, the environmental lawyers of China, they always come to our college of law. Kasi nakiki, nagpapatulong sila. Our accountants, our top accountants, and the accountants of China, because they are now have to be governed by the international financial requirements, they are asking our accountants, do you see all of these layers and layers of interaction of function? Those are the ones that will matter. And those are the ones which will be deep a new uh, model that uh, we should pursue. Right. Uh, 
Professor Carl, are they open? Do you think the Chinese side are open to environmental cooperation? Because the concern we have had throughout the decades, and we actually in different capacities, we have raised them on track 1.5 engagements. I've met many Chinese officials. I was in Hainan, China in 2019, just before the uh, pandemic. These are issues we keep on discussing with our Chinese colleagues in the foreign ministry, in the influential academic circles. But uh, some people would say, we're not very sure if China is really open to this. Perhaps they just want to talk about it. But in the meantime, they are changing the facts on the ground in terms of development of more militia forces, in terms of militarization of those disputed islands. Uh, I, I know we can talk about this forever, but my, my, uh, my, my point is I completely understand the wisdom of what you are emphasizing here. But the question is, is there a receptiveness also on the other side based on your understanding? Um, let me answer your question with, um, I don't know if I had shared it with you, about 20 years ago, we had a round table discussion in uh, Japan, it's a any direct answer, but it will, it will demonstrate to you something which is quite important. I was the first presenter and the title of my paper was the functional route to cooperation in the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. And as I was presenting, I was starting to read my paper, a gentleman right across from me was raising, practically raising his hand and said, Dr. Carlos cannot present this paper, you know, this 20 years ago, remember, because mm -hmm. this issue cannot be internationalized. And that was an international roundtable discussion. Right. Um, fortunately, mercifully, the chair of the of, uh, Japanese, you know, um, deferred to, uh, uh, you know, ask my opinion. I said, well, I wrote this paper as a political scientist. The right. title president of the National Defense College is just a title. And he mm. agreed that um, that gentleman, you know, relented and allowed me to read. You know, Richard, what happened after I read it? Miko Chan on table. You know, what happened to him? Wow, Dr. Carlos, I really like what you're saying. I deliver. What's the point? You just keep on pounding and pounding. Because they are a superpower. They have to abide by international law. The seven artificial islands that they built destroying our reefs, what did I tell them? Why don't you convert them from a weaponized islands to marine stations? Alam mo, actually, lingit sa kalaman natin. Yung neighbor ko kasi Richard C. Mike Fortes, eh, marine scientist. Alam mo yes. ba, 25 years ago, they are already cooperating. They're not talking right. territory, ano, uh, uh, sovereignty. They're just looking at the South China Sea as one ecology. Magpipinsan niya mga sea plants niyan. Yung mga isda dyan, ay, ano, uh, they belong to uh, uh, one family. In fact, we keep on ni-raise ko din yan sa, ano, sa Chinese ambassador. Bakit naman? Eh, Nag-declare ka na ng anong pangalan ni Ari, fishing holiday. Hindi mo naman kami tinanong dahil na-affecto naman yung fisherman namin. Sabi niya, right. kasi para daw sa fisherman lang nila, eh, yun nga, isinakop mo nga yung karagatan din nakasama namin. Right. Saka bakit ka ako, pinapanganak yung mga isda sa Palawan, kasi isa namang galunggong, hindi mo kami sinisharean. Alam mo yung ganun? Just yes, keep on founding that kind of thing and it will produce results. Diba? I like, I like the fact that you mentioned something you have to keep on pounding on the, yeah, on the yeah, door until, yeah. it, until it has to burst open. Yeah, uh, yeah. On this issue, ma'am, um, just to clarify, uh, uh, Professor Carlos, if um, uh, I think President Marcos has made it very clear that our sovereign rights will be sacred, and he has also emphasized the importance of the arbitration award. As you understand, this is a very important reassurance for a lot of people in light of everything throughout the years. Um, so are we, are we going to make sure that any environmental cooperation with China will not be uh, in dissonance or actually it will be in consonance with our sovereign rights and the arbitration award in 2016? What are the legal parameters for cooperation? Yeah, um, both of us are not lawyers, but we know that the, the, the collision, uh, I, I mean the cooperation uh, will happen where the legal framework is there. The arbitral award was not an award of anything. I'm not sure uh, let us emphasize that Richard. It simply declared that there is no basis for their seven or nine dash line. Yun lang yeah. But panghawakan mo na yun. No. But when you start discussing low politics area, environment, protection mm -hmm. of ano, maritime security, et cetera, like that. In fact, alam mo, Richard, pati yung balikatan, nag-iiba na yung tono nila. I mean, yung iba na yung kanilang uh, hugis. Hindi ba dati, you fight, you train together to fight together? No. The enemy is now the consequences of climate change. Pati yung, ano, yung content ng kanilang, ano, H -H ng kanilang exercise. Yes, HADR na ngayon. Kanya nga, hindi mag, ano ka, uh, mag-sakop, mag mag-imbita ka ng iba na gusto talaga. Japan, Vietnam, China, Russia. Ang tagal-tagal ng Russia nag apply di ba? May defense attache nga sila dito. Kaya nga nakakalungkot na inexude na naman ng Amerika sa rimpak yung China, di ba dati-dati kasama siya. 
ganito. Hindi dapat ganun. Kailangan dapat, sabi nga ni Xi Jinping, shared ano future eh. Tapos ang Amerika naman ang nag-exclude sa kanila. Again, this is not to be a uh, Chinophile. But yes, you know, isa lang po ang karagatan natin, magkakadugtong po yung Atlantic, Pacific, etc. like that. Pakailaman po natin yan kasi isa lang po ang planeta. Diba? Right. Oh, uh, Professor Carlos, let's... Zeroing on this point, I mean, uh, just for disclosure, I have been pushing for ASEAN-Russia cooperation for quite some time. Uh, um, so I completely understand the importance of having, let's say, a third force in the region. Uh, obviously, that has been significantly complicated in light of the ongoing conflict in Europe uh, and in Ukraine. But you have emphasized the importance of neutrality. Just, just to uh, you know, just to be honest on this point, I mean, my point is. We already have voted multiple times in the United Nations in favor of Ukraine, or, or you could say in condemnation of uh, military operations and invasion of Ukraine. Uh, at the same time, there are U.S. sanctions and U.S. allies, so there could be implications if you push with our military cooperation with Russia, including sanctions against military imports from Russia. How do you think we should navigate that very difficult situation? I understand you want maximal cooperation with everyone, right? Everyone, I think, wants that, uh, like friends to all, enemy to none. But the reality is we're a U.S. treaty ally. There are strict sanctions. There's an ongoing conflict. Any serious engagement with Russia may have repercussion uh, financially and strategically vis-a-vis -vis our Western partners. Um, how do you think we should navigate that, uh, Professor Carlos? Yeah, you already used the magic word, well mm. calibrated, mm. which means that any and all data necessary required for decision making Right. It should be available to the president of the republic. That's why if there is an offer from Russia for oil and gas, and many people, Richard, do not realize that Russia is European and Asian. Ang lawak-lawak niyan. 11 right. time zones, ano? Sobra. Andiyan lang sa tuktok natin yan eh. No, let us consider that. After all, the U.S. also considered Germany's requirement for its oil and gas, where upwards of 40 percent really relies on Russian oil and gas. And as a matter of fact, they excluded that in the sanction mechanism. So, you know, um, America cannot do that for Germany and not do that for us. That is where we need to be. Mm. What is the term I'd like to use, Richard? Intelligently smart in negotiating. Kung tayo nga ta later on, sasabihin natin na talo na naman tayo dyan, eh gago kasi tayo eh. Tayo nagpatalo sa sarili natin. Bakit? Pinano ka ba? Uh, pinwersa ka bang mag-sign yan? Masahin mo yung fine print, di ba? Huwag mo sabihin later on na, ano, na, na nilokop tayo. Inilokop mo sarili mo dahil hindi mo binasa. You understand? May mga issues sa mga death trap, etc. Alam mo pala, ba't ka utang ng utang? Alam mo pala, hindi mo mababayaran. Those are the kinds of things that we should, we should realize that nothing happens in our country without the collusion of our national and local officials. Diba? Right. Okay. I, 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 thank yeah. you for pointing that out. Uh, I, mean, uh, the, I mean, the thing is, for instance, Turkey, a NATO member, has been sanctioned for getting S-400 from Russia. But at the same time, you have India, uh, not a U.S. treaty ally, but important strategic partner, using that partnership to get the maximum out of Russia. Of course, this is controversial, but we saw India stood its ground. I mean, you may disagree with that on a moral politic standpoint, but many are saying, well, India is protecting its national interest, and it has to stand its ground. So perhaps the Philippines is going along the same line and saying, hey, you know, we have our own national interests and we have to deal with it accordingly and America has to understand and appreciate that too. Yeah, negotiate smart, Richard. You look at our geography and I'm sure you realize that already. Right smack in the middle of the Pacific Ocean to your, to your uh, uh, east and that is U.S. Further down, 4,000 nautical miles away. To your west, you have the contested South China Sea and further to the west would be the People's Republic of China. We are the most strategically located country. So we're stupid people if we do not negotiate well calibrated with all these countries around us. By the way, when we were in Moscow several times, talaga right. Russia already declared that it was pivoting to, to Asia. Pero right. di silang pivot to Asia. Yeah. Yeah. Pero sila they're doing it gingerly. Oh, matagal na eh. Diba? I'm sure Richard na mention ko na yan sa klase din. No? Right. Dahil yun na sinasabi ng Moscow counterparts natin. Why not? Masyado tayong, let's just stop being the tail of the American side. I've declared that up many times, uh, Richard. And let us really stand for ano ba yung gusto natin at makakatulong sa ating bansa. And right. we have that strategic card which we should recognize. And I think the present leadership recognizes that. Right. Thank you for that. So la on last point on this, uh, uh, Professor Carlos. Um, Americans, all right. I mean, uh, they, we have known them for quite some time. But there has been some significant sea change in terms of the terms of engagement with America under President Duterte. Uh, in what sense will that sea change continue or be recalibrated 
under incoming President Marcos. I'm sure Pres incoming President Marcos has his own ideas. Uh, back in the day, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with this. I studied this as a student. Former President Marcos had a very, uh, I would say, optimal equilateral strategic policy. He had the alliance with the US. He had communication channels with Soviet Union. He normalized ties with Maoist China. I mean, he was doing all of them at the same time. I mean, three-dimensional yeah. dance tango, right? Is this what we're going to see under incoming President Marcos? Or is that something that you want to see as a national security advisor? We already saw him in his first days after uh, an emphatic election victory. He's meeting folks from all sides, from India, from Korea, from yeah. Japan, from US. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it seems like he wants it to have it with everyone and not choose, not to have favorites. Because uh, the concern of many is, uh, it's all good to say, we, let's be more independent from US. But if you're going to jump to another superpower, I'm not sure that how that makes us independent. But in the case of President Marcos, it seems he's signaling, no, I don't want to be dependent on anyone. I want equilateral balancing, dynamic balancing towards uh, multiple powers. Yeah. Am I on, on, on the right note in reading this, uh, Professor Carlos? Uh, can you please? Yeah. Uh, yeah. On yeah. You're absolutely right. No, We are not going to make a choice between X and Y. Right. We are going to find out who is going to buy our pineapple, mangoes, you know, coconut oil. If it's China, okay, let's do economic ties. Who is going to present us uh, with a nuclear umbrella, mutual defense treaty? We need to review that. 1951, by Richard, no? Mm -hmm. um, that, I mean, it's been a the geopolitical realities are already so radically different. And I like that. And mm -hmm. now this is a new Philippines, which is talking. This is not Philippines in 1951. You know, uh, one of the most uh, devastated countries next to, after Poland, but now we are a different Philippines. We are the fifth most mineralized countries in the world. Lahat ng kailangan ng e-vehicles nandito sa atin. And we're just stupid people if we don't take advantage of that. We have a cadre of professional people like you, experts, scientists, etc. You put together, Richard, itong natural and human resources. Voila, we can be the leader of Southeast Asia. Di ba? Let's ambition to be like that. And I think in one of the interviews of... Uh, President Bongbong Marcos, he really hinted something like that because when President Marcos, the father, was, um, uh, when he was president, you know, Lee Kuan Yew could not have a word edgewise. Pag nagsasalita si Marcos, si Marcos, alam mo, nilalagay lang niya yung kanyang, remember, I wrote my dissertation on Marcos, kaya ang dami kong alam sa kasaysayan. Exactly, kanyang, that's why ano, I asked this question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yan. Sineset aside niya yung speech niya, extent, nasalita siya. Definitely. And he was regarded as such. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Ma. I mean, the idea that we have to be ambitious again, we have to assert ourselves regionally and vis-a-vis -vis our allies, new Philippines in that sense. And I'm hearing the same thing in India, uh, in China, and many of other emerging powers across the world. So obviously, I understand this is the zeitgeist uh, we're dealing with. Now, domestically, this is we're already ending our lecture uh, discussion, not lecture. <laughs> it goes like a lecture. It goes like a lecture. <laughs> My apologies for, for that. Uh, Freudian sleep. Um, now, on this point, um, domestic security. So, uh, Professor Carlos, I was in Marawi just before the pandemic, and the situation there, the reconstruction issue was quite a big concern. I sense a lot of alienation on the ground. I sense even worries that perhaps there could be resurgence of more extremist groups if the situation is not handled properly. Uh, at the same time, kudos to President Duterte. And, you know, I've been, I've said a lot about the outgoing administration, but on this point, I've been very... Uh, supportive of President Duterte in terms of the transition to BARM, uh, the Bank Samoro, uh, you know, autonomous region. Um, what is going to be your approach on this, uh, Secretary? What, what do you think is the best way to approach this issue? The Marawi reconstruction issue, supporting the BARM, do you think this is the way forward? Yes, let us support the BARM because they're going through a very sensitive experiment. Right. And uh, as a matter of fact, they have been given an extension uh, up to, uh, I think, 2025, uh, after which they will have a new uh, uh, leadership. Because the farm, Richard, will be the pilot of our federal system when we do adopt it. So if we see a successor, there will be more gravitas for, you know, and I, you know that I'm one of the, mo the more uh, staunch supporters of constitutional change for us to shift to a federal system and a parliamentary system. Let's address all the issues which we know already on the ground. Kaya nga si Richard sabi ko, wag na yung mga negotiation. Alam na natin yan. We are not quarreling with that anymore. No? Let is a, there is a poetic way of, of me uh, saying that. Eh. Parang don't kill the dream of anyone to be an architect, to be a scientist, to be a journalist. 
pagka pinatay mo yung kanyang kanyang ano dream niya ahawakan niya baril what is what is so difficult to understand about that di ba address mo yan eh. alam mo na yung military route doesn't work it doesn't work here it didn't work elsewhere in the world at paano pa ulit ulit tika sa man ng ulo mo pakialaman mo na yung local peace council because they're so close to what is happening on the ground and they know what is needed by the locals Right. I mean, thank you very much for emphasizing. At saka yung issue ng dignidad, no? Yung sense yeah. of belonging, of being respected, your human dignity being accepted. So, uh, I really appreciate you emphasizing that. Now, uh, just to end on this note, maybe a little bit controversial. Um, Secretary, Professor, I mean, um, I think there were libel cases that you filed before coming into your administration and all. Uh, some people have kind of made an issue out of that and they felt that perhaps this is not the best indicator, including you have said a lot of things against red tagging. Could you give us a little bit of an idea behind that? In fact, I heard that perhaps I could be on that list or something yeah, like that. Um, actually, Richard, this happened uh, before elections. Pa. Unfortunately, for reasons not known to me, it was made public only at this time. And people were saying, Ako, hindi pa nga siya NSA. She's taking advantage of her position. That's not true at all. Thank you, Richard, for asking that question. Because, uh, you know, Richard, I have built my name for 56 years through hard work. Through sheer hard work, you know that. No? Like you, hard work and perseverance. I mean, we struggle through the jungle of all this bureaucracy and many other factors, human factors. And I'm sure what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And yet we succeeded. We succeeded in being our own person and that nobody can diminish us unless we allow them to diminish us. And so I said, those people who in fact had maligned me, you know, that, that of them don't even know me from Eve. I said, they should know that I, as an ordinary citizen, can in fact invoke our laws. But don't do this. Huwag niyo akong sirain, ano, na wala naman akong ginagawa sa inyo, no? And you call me stupid, etc. like that. Uh, itong mga, in, ano. So I filed a case with the NBI, dun sa cyber libel. But just so, para lang ma-stop na to. This is destroying our society. You know, just because hindi ako nag-worship sa altar ng mga, yung mga ito, ay parang gusto na nila akong busalan. Is this what liberal democracy is all about, Richard? No. We're actually practically doing something so antithetical to liberal democracy. I'm sure pag nasa authoritarian regime kayo, all of us will be spouting the same thing. Is that what we want? No. We want liberal democracy. Kami ni Richard, pwede kami mag-away on issues. Maya, maya, we're friends already. We're, you know, because once upon a time, Richard was my student. That's how it's going to be. That is how it's going to be. So, let it be and um yeah that uh, and yes i filed that long long before i was even considered i was even in the radar of this administration as a private citizen of course now uh, the, the reason I, I raised it is of course there's there are people who have concerns with the return of another marcos right so their idea is like oh may, is this a sign of times at the same time there are also people saying that uh well i mean uh, there could be legitimate criticisms. I mean, let's just be honest. You and I have had some exchanges, but of course, as diplomatic as possible with everything. So where do you draw the line between like malicious, uh, libelous criticism? Uh, I, I got a lot of a thousand death threats and whatever throughout the years too. Uh, and then where do you say it's just a legitimate criticism or humor or, or disagreement, the kind of stuff you and I have had, uh, Professor, throughout the years, just to be transparent about this? Yeah. Richard, um, contest of uh, things that we believe in, you know, our political philosophies, that's par for the course. That's our work as scholars. But you, you start maligning me as a person, I will not allow that. You know? And uh, I'm sure you will not allow that too. Because especially you're starting, just you're starting your career as a scholar. And here I am in the sunset of my years, and this is what I'm, I'm going to see. I'm sure you know what my colleagues in my department did to me. And thank you very much that you gave me full support for that because I need the support of the academic community. Chancellor Fidel Nemanso called me up and he called it academic bullying. What is happening to our university, Richard? Are we not allowed to disagree uh, in terms of our philosophies? Yes, we disagree, but not ever go to the personnel because that is not part of the contest. The contest is the collision of ideas. And let it remain like that. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Carlos, incoming National Secret Advisor, for really clarifying a lot of points. There are a lot of uh, 
<laughs> I would say these are controversial points, tricky points, but that's precisely why we wanted this interview because I kilala ko kayo, mama. I mean, the first moment I came into your class, I think it was late for 10, 15 minutes. I immediately disagreed with something that was said. And I was very glad that I saw your uh, not only tolerance, but appreciation of that kind of contrarian views. And today we had an opportunity to really distill a lot of complicated issues. Uh, for sure, na ma-appreciate ng ating audience, mga kabataan, itong mga diskusyon natin. And looking forward, uh, Professor Carlos, uh, incoming Secretary Carlos, for more interaction and hopefully interviews down the road as developments come in. Um, I don't know, I don't want to preempt it, but I see you as a very influential incoming National Security Advisor, given everything, given that a lot of your students will be also in positions of influence. Uh, many people, lives you have touched, many people have inspired, many former students. So I just want to... Isang guru rin ako, and one day I'll be hopefully in your position, uh, whereby I'll have former students also hopefully backing me up if if you know uh, we feel that we're not getting the due respect and recognition we deserve. So, marami salamat, uh, uh, incoming national security, uh, Dr. Professor Carlos. Do you have any message for the youth, for our supporters uh, as the incoming national security advice uh, for our you know audience dito sa GMA network? Well, uh, for the young people, uh, please, okay lang sa inyo mag-tiktok, tiktok, magbasa po kayo. Kasi ang makikita nyo ang talagang mga scholars of uh, uh, great uh, prestige like uh, Richard Haydarian. He really reads and reads a lot yeah. and he writes and articulates well. And Richard, as of, um, in the very near future, I would need your help because of your scholarship in the Middle East. So uh, yeah, that's how what scholars do. What scholars do is really to build a better society on the basis of our investigations as scientists. Thank you very much, Richard, for this rather lengthy interview and looks like a lecture already. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor, Doctor, and incoming National Security Advisor, Clarita Carlos. Hope to catch up with you soon, ma'am. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Salamat. Talk to you soon, ma'am. God bless. Okay na tayo, guys. Thank you, Salon. Uh, may mga, may konting mga internet issues tayo. Siguro we can edit those parts out, no? Oo. So, okay ka na. Ikaw na walang bahala doon. Thank okay, you, Richard. Okay na, mahala. God bless. Pasensya na, ma'am. Mag-lunch na kayo. Kasi, <laughs> oh, mag-lunch na kami. Thank you. Okay,